Concerns continue over eastern equine encephalitis known as Triple E in southern New England. The virus recently claimed the lives of a Fairhaven woman and a person in West Warwick. Several Friday night high school football games have been moved before dusk. They're set to begin at 4 o'clock tomorrow. Schools in Warwick, Johnston, Westerly, Barrington and North Providence are just some playing before dusk on Friday to cut down on the mosquito risk. And it's not just the state of Rhode Island taking precautions against Triple E. Iowa News News reporter Kate Walsh is live in Lakeville with what Massachusetts officials are doing as well. Kate. We're live outside Lakeville Public Library where Governor Charlie Baker just wrapped up a meeting behind closed doors with state scientists and public health officials talking about the ongoing threat of triple E and other mosquito borne illnesses here in Massachusetts. Then after that closed door meeting, they held a briefing to the media so we could get their message out to you, the public. The key point that Massachusetts public health officials wanted to reiterate is that the threat from mosquito borne illnesses is still just as high as it was in the summer months and that people need to follow the advice to wear long sleeves, long pants, use bug spray and stay indoors between dusk and dawn. With the rain we had this morning, it's important to check buckets or surfaces in your yard for any standing water that could be a breeding ground for mosquitoes. Governor Charlie Baker said the aerial spraying in August hasn't been a reactive measure to reports of human and animal cases of Triple E. He said they've been proactive by trapping hundreds of mosquitoes since this past spring and seeing which communities have had evidence of the disease. We learned that the threat of Triple E comes in cycles, and this year it's being seen in more parts of Massachusetts than just Plymouth and Bristol counties. This starts with um, mosquitoes that don't bite people biting birds, and then those birds get bitten by mosquitoes that bite people and transmit the disease to those mosquitoes, which then turn around and bite us. As we start planning uh, for this activity in the spring, we're going to need to start planning on a much broader geographic radius than the one we've planned on historically. Lakeville is one of 35 communities deemed to be a critical risk of Triple E, the highest risk. Officials tell me that Triple E was actually first ever detected here in Massachusetts, and it was first detected back in 1938. I asked why Bristol and Plymouth counties get hit the hardest, it seems, and they said it's due to the swamps and other geographic areas that are attractive to mosquitoes and their breeding. Live in Lakeville, I'm Kate Walsh, Eyewitness News. First tonight at 530 as the threat of Triple E and West Nile virus remains, the DEM has a message for deer hunters. Eyewitness News reporter Steve Nielsen joins us now live in studio with the details. Steve. Well, Mike Caroline, the typical advice from officials stay indoors if you can, but that's not possible for one group of Rhode Islanders starting Saturday. Concerns are growing across Rhode Island and southeastern Massachusetts during this active mosquito season. Now Saturday, thousands of Rhode Islanders will be spending time outside, many during dawn and dusk when the mosquitoes tend to be out more. That's because the Rhode Island Department of Environmental Management says deer hunting season begins. The DEM putting out a notice to all licensed deer hunters in the state to make sure they're wearing bug spray and long sleeves when they hunt to limit exposure. Also, two deer have tested positive for Triple E in Rhode Island this month. Because of that, the DEM wants hunters to be cautious when field dressing game and not to consume any animal that appears unhealthy. This all comes just days after several Rhode Island communities received aerial spraying to kill much of the mosquito population. The more that we can kill adult mosquitoes that are flying around, the better that we can protect public health. But officials say there are still mosquitoes out there until the first frost, typically weeks away. We'll have much more on aerial spraying and where this Triple E situation stands tonight for our special broadcast on Triple E concerns at 630 on Fox Providence. I'm Steve Nielsen, Eyewitness News. The latest developments now on the risk of mosquito borne diseases here in southern New England. Even though it's mid-September, mosquitoes aren't going anywhere anytime soon. And that's prompting changes to outdoor activities. Several of tomorrow's high school football games won't be played under the Friday night lights. Instead, they've been moved to late afternoon. Other school districts are canceling all outdoor activities. King Philip Regional is the latest, announcing it just, just in the last hour. Meanwhile, Governor Charlie Baker was in southeastern Massachusetts as afternoon to discuss the mosquito threat. Eyewitness News reporter Kate Walsh is live in Lakeville with that. 
Well, Megan Chanum, we're live outside Lakeville Public Library where Governor Charlie Baker met with the Department of Public Health and Energy and Environmental Affairs Secretary as well as other scientists from across the state talking about this ongoing threat. Now, Lakeville is considered one of 35 communities in Massachusetts right now at critical risk of the disease. It's a rare but potentially deadly disease first detected here in Massachusetts and back in 1938. Eastern equine encephalitis or Triple E has been more prevalent in Bristol and Plymouth counties based on their swamps and geography attractive to mosquitoes. This is a very scary issue for people. Governor Charlie Baker said it's concerning that this year we're seeing it spread to other parts of Massachusetts prompting a first public health hazard for our region in August resulting in a series of aerial and ground spraying. A second public health hazard was signed on September 9th, 2019, so at the beginning of this week, um, and the Department of Agricultural Resources has been able to re-engage the contractors who fly the planes uh, to recommence aerial spraying. Governor Baker said the state has been proactive in preventing even more cases by trapping hundreds of mosquitoes and testing them since the spring. The state warning the threat is not over yet, even as fall approaches. Most important message for us all to share at this moment is about personal protection. It's very important for all of us to protect ourselves and our loved ones by making sure to avoid being outside from dusk to dawn. Now, public health officials say the chemicals used in the aerial and ground spraying have no adverse effects to humans. So I asked them separately why then they can't spray over organic farms. And they said it's simply because those farms will lose their organic certification for the next three years just by having any pesticides, even those that aren't harmful to humans. For now, we're live in Lakeville. I'm Kate Walsh, Eyewitness News.